Another church in North Texas set to be looking for a new pastor after theirs was fired, accused of having an inappropriate relationship with a woman. Trinity Bible Church of Dallas announced the indefinite removal of lead pastor Stephen J. Lawson. He spent decades at other churches before coming to Trinity Bible Church six years ago. The church says they will pray for Lawson, but we did just check their website and they have already deleted his biography. It is incumbent upon every true believer to be pursuing holiness, and those who are not pursuing holiness are not true believers in the Lord. They may have a profession of faith, but they do not have the possession of faith. Holiness marks true believers. To note, another pastor has been fired in North Texas for having a, quote, inappropriate relationship with a woman. Trinity Bible Church is near SMU's campus in Dallas, and officials confirm lead pastor Steve Lawson has been removed from all ministry activities. He spent decades in other churches before coming to Trinity Bible six years ago. Officials say the church will pray for Lawson, but we just checked. They've already deleted his body. Another church in North Texas set to be looking for a new pastor after theirs was fired, accused of having an inappropriate relationship with a woman. Trinity Bible Church of Dallas announced the indefinite removal of lead pastor Stephen J. Lawson. He spent decades at other churches before coming to Trinity Bible Church six years ago. The church says they will pray for Lawson, but we did just check their website and they have already deleted his biography. Hello, brothers and sisters. God bless. Hope all is going well with you. I'm playing these clips to demonstrate a point, as Jesus says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy, and how they'll put burdens on men's backs that they themselves don't bear when it comes to the law. They'll put burdens of the law on your back that they themselves don't bear. And conceptually, he's been putting the burden of the law on people's back for years and making them think, well, if you're not pursuing holiness, then you're not a true believer. That you should see holiness in your life, that's a mark of a true believer. And you can see that he hasn't been bearing this burden himself. According to his own criteria, he's not a true believer. It is incumbent upon every true believer to be pursuing holiness. And those who are not pursuing holiness are not true believers in the Lord. They may have a profession of faith, but they do not have the possession of faith. Holiness marks true so that another believers. Another pastor has been fired in North Texas for having a, quote, inappropriate relationship with a Now, woman. he has made people believe that holiness is self-dependent for a long time by saying things like this. He says it in other clips that if you don't see holiness in yourself, if you don't see yourself as holy, well, then you're not a true believer because that's the criteria of a true believer. And so he makes holiness self-dependent, which negates the work of the cross by which we have been made holy. Colossians 1.22, he reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ's body by his death, that we should be holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. That due to the cross, he reconciled us to himself through the death of his body, that we might be holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. By one single perfect offering, Hebrews 10.14 that by one offering he has perfected forever those who are sanctified. So it's what Jesus has done that has perfected us forever in the sight of God. It's not what we have done, but Christ and his death, he has reconciled us to himself, making us holy without blemish and free from accusation. And it was not based on our works. It's not self-dependent. He saved us and called us with a holy calling, not because of our own works, but because of his own purposes of grace, which he gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. So we see from the scripture that he saved us and called us with a holy calling, not because of our own works. So we're not saved or made holy because of our own works, but because of purposes of grace. But he has been negating in people's mind that they've been made holy by purposes of grace through the cross and making them think it's self-dependent upon your works and your performance. It is incumbent upon every true believer to be pursuing holiness, and those who are not pursuing holiness are not true believers in the Lord. They may have a profession of faith, but they do not have the possession of faith. Holiness marks true believers. See, he's trying to get people to pursue something that they already have in Christ. They already have this in Christ that Hebrews 10.10 10 says, 
By his will we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ once and for all. That for once and for all we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ once and for all through one perfect offering. By one offering he has perfected forever those who are sanctified. So what he's trying to do is trick people in the flesh to pursue something in the flesh that they already have through the cross, which is perfection. Remember in Galatians 3 it says, are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, do you think you're being made perfect in the flesh? Having begun in the Spirit of God, do you now think you're being made perfect by what you do in the flesh? And this would be in accordance to the law in this context. They're looking past Jesus Christ and Him crucified and what that accomplished, and that's why He's saying to them, O foolish Galatians, who is bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, to whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly betrayed as crucified, so they are not obeying the truth. They're looking past Jesus Christ and Him crucified and what it accomplished and who we are on the basis of Christ, His life, and His word. And I believe through the years that Stephen Lawson has been bewitching people with statements like this. It is incumbent upon every true believer to be pursuing holiness. And those who are not pursuing holiness are not true believers in the Lord. They may have a profession of faith, but they do not have the possession of faith. Holiness marks true believers. See, if that is true, according to his own criteria, he is not a true believer because now that the scandal has come out and we see that what he's been doing behind the scenes is an inappropriate relationship with the lady, then by that, we know from his own standard that he's not a true believer according to his own criteria here. And the issue with these people is they really do not believe on him who justifies the ungodly. To the one who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accredited to righteousness. They don't believe on him who justifies the ungodly. They believe on him who justifies the holy. That you have to have this personal holiness, and that is the mark of a true believer. They cannot look at an ungodly person and confirm them as a believer. As far as, as they make their evaluation, they say, ah, they're just too ungodly to be saved. You know, if they ever have some personal holiness, then I'll be able to affirm them as a true believer. They may have a profession of faith, but they do not have the possession of faith. Holiness marks true believers. Tonight, another pastor has been fired in North Texas for having a, quote, inappropriate relationship with a woman. And this is in part what Jesus means when he says, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. That they don't live up to the very standards that they try to put on other people's back, which is the burden of the law. Remember in Galatians, Paul says that the circumcised don't even keep the law themselves, but they want you to be circumcised that they may boast in your flesh. And that's how these people are. They don't keep the law themselves, but they want to try to get you to try to keep the law to some measure, some degree, to make some self-evaluations, to try to determine whether you're holy by self-dependency an individual performance thing. But we see that our righteousness and our redemption and our sanctification, which is our holiness, is not an individualized performance thing. It's in Christ Jesus where we're unified and we share in these things together. That by his own doing, you are in Christ Jesus who became from us from God righteousness, sanctification, redemption, and wisdom so that just as it is written, let him and boast, boast in the Lord. And some translations say holiness. By his own doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became from us from God, righteousness and holiness and redemption. That's what sanctification is. It's holiness, and Jesus Christ is our holiness. So that the one that says that they're holy before God in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation, would boast in the Lord. They would not boast in themselves. They would boast in the Lord that he reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ's body by his death, that we might be holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. And none of these Calvinists will actually do this. They'll never confirm that I've been made holy through the cross without blemish and free from accusation, without adding in this progressive sanctification doctrine that they always do to try to negate the actual holiness that we have in Christ. And so what they ultimately do is get argumentative with you over this progressive sanctification doctrine, saying if you're not seeing it manifest in your own flesh and in your own body, in your own life, then you're not a true believer. And that is not boasting in Jesus Christ for your righteousness, your redemption, and your holiness. 
They have now made it about human individualized performance. It is incumbent upon every true believer to be pursuing holiness, and those who are not pursuing holiness are not true believers in the Lord. They may have a profession of faith, but they do not have the possession of faith. Holiness marks true believers. See, he's saying holiness marks true believers. They may have a confession of faith, but he's saying they're not in possession of faith, that they don't actually have faith because you don't see them as holy. Therefore, they're not really having faith. But to the one who doesn't work but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accredited to righteousness. An ungodly person can be justified and righteous in God's sight. They're believing on him. They're believing on Jesus who reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ's body by his death that we might be holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. Notice it says that we might be holy in his sight. So it has to do with God's sight. And we walk by faith and not by sight. That we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith in Jesus Christ and what he's accomplished. But see, what they do is they move the goalposts to try to get you to look at yourself. Look at yourself. Are you holy? Forget about what Jesus did on the cross by making us holy. Are you personally holy? Because if you're not holy, well, then what Jesus did means nothing that's what they're trying to do and they're just making you look to your works your performance your individualized life and to the law it is incumbent upon every true believer to be pursuing holiness and those who are not pursuing holiness are not true believers in the lord they may have a profession of faith but they do not have the possession of faith Holiness marks true believers. What he's saying here is that the people that do this, they have a confession of faith, but they don't actually possess faith. They don't actually possess real faith. He's saying if you don't see this personal holiness, they don't possess real faith. So he has to see something. We walk by faith and not by sight, but he has to see something to really know that the faith is legitimate. So faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of the things not seen. Your faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. He was looking for evidence in things seen. He has to see personal holiness coming out of the flesh or he will not confirm a person's faith. He cannot justify the ungodly in his own mind. He cannot declare them righteous as God can because he's not believing in the work of the cross. The scripture shows us that he was handed over for our sins. He was raised for our justification. That he was raised for our justification. That's the Christ that we're believing in, the one that justified us. And we maintain a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. That we have a justified, not guilty verdict by our faith, independent from law performance. We maintain a man is justified by him who was raised for our justification. And we maintain that that justification is independent from the law. We maintain a man is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. So what they do when they say, you know, if you don't have this holiness going on in your life, in a lot of people's mind, this is just some amplified version of righteousness. That, you know, this holiness is an amplified version of righteousness. Well, how, how do you get it? How would you get it? They never clarify it. It's very vague. But a person ultimately thinks it's going to be the law. And you'll see how he'll give people that impression as he quotes Moses going back to Leviticus. So he makes people think that you're holy through the law. Go ahead and play the clip. Our Lord prays for the personal holiness of all those who are true believers. It is the holiness of God that demands the holiness of his people. Long ago, God said through the prophet Moses in Leviticus 11 in verse 44, Be holy, for I am holy. And in verse 45, You shall be holy, for I am holy. It is incumbent upon every true believer to be pursuing holiness, and those who are not pursuing holiness are not true believers in the Lord. They may have a profession of faith, but they do not have the possession of faith. Holiness marks true believers. 
So he says those not pursuing holiness are not true believers in the Lord. And I would say those who do not believe that Christ has made us holy through the cross, Colossians 1.22, are the ones that are not true believers in the Lord. If you're pursuing holiness and the denial of what Christ has accomplished, then you're not a true believer in the Lord. And you can see that he doesn't talk about holiness in light of progressive revelation in the New Testament and how we've been made holy through the cross. He goes all the way back to Moses and Leviticus, and there's this de declaration that the Lord says, Be holy, for I am holy. You will be holy, for I am holy. And we can see that God has made us holy because he is holy, we are holy. Because he is holy, we are holy. Not we are holy because we have made ourselves holy, but we are holy because he is holy. And he reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ's body by his death that we might be holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. So when it says that he reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ's body by his death that we might be holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation, it is showing us the avenue and the means by which we have been made holy and it was the cross of Christ. It was through his death and his body on the cross. And so Paul said, may I never boast except in the cross of Christ through which the world's been crucified to me and I the world. May I never boast except in one singular means by which I've been redeemed unto God. I've been made of the righteousness of God, justified, holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. May I never boast except in the cross of Christ. Tell you about holiness, to preach on holiness and how you're going to get holy. He goes all the way to Leviticus and back to Moses and then to the law. That's what he would give people the impression of. He's not talking about the cross and progressive revelation and what Jesus Christ has accomplished. By his will, we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ once and for all. That we have been made holy through what he accomplished once and for all. And if you have this mentality, well, that's not true until I can see it in myself. It's not true until I can actually see my own personal holiness. Then you're not walking by faith. You're not walking by faith in Jesus Christ and what he accomplished on the cross by which he has reconciled us to himself, to Jesus Christ's body by his death, that we might be holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation. If a person insists that it's not true that Christ has done this until they see it in themselves, then they're not walking by faith. They're just looking to themselves and their work's performance to validate themselves, to make this self-evaluation to ultimately self-justify themselves before God. And this is the issue that I had with Stephen Lawson, is that exactly what he does? He tries to trick people into seeking self-justification, a self-righteousness, self-holiness, all through self-performance, because if you don't have these things, don't believe that you can believe on him who justifies the ungodly. Now, I know some of his followers will say that, no, he doesn't teach self-justification or self-righteousness, but by moving this goalpost here about holiness, he's negating justification and righteousness to the one who has faith. The ungodly person cannot believe that they're justified and made righteous until they see this personal holiness start to manifest in their lives which will be a self-evaluation that they'll make, which in itself is a self-justification. When you have this evaluation system that you're making of yourself, well, yeah, I'm holy now. Well, that's a self-evaluation, a self-justification. That's what he's tricking people into, a self-justification of themselves. And it's all based on what they see as they evaluate things. Then it's based on what they see, and now they're looking at themselves and not Christ, and we walk by faith and not by sight. That we look not at the things that are seen, for the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen are eternal. It is incumbent upon every true believer to be pursuing holiness, and those who are not pursuing holiness are not true believers in the Lord. They may have a profession of faith, but they do not have the possession of faith. Holiness marks true believers. See, that is a flawed self-evaluation system, and we can see that because of this man's own life, and now he has this inappropriate relationship, and everybody could have been judging him. Yes, he's so holy. He's so holy. He's a true believer. Well, now look, he has this inappropriate relationship. Apparently, he wasn't so holy. Well, I guess he's not a true believer according to their own criteria. And it's all based on things that you see, and it's all judgments based on the law, and that's what I mean. These people don't understand how... It is to walk in the Spirit and walk in justification and live by faith in the Son of God who loved us and gave himself up for us.
Jesus said, why do you attempt to remove the speck out of your brother's eye when you have a log in your own? And this is how he's been doing for years. Like through his teaching, he's been trying to get people to stop their sinning, stop their immorality and things like this. And he doesn't know the means and the modality to actually deal with sin through the spirit. He indirectly and implicitly puts people under the law by robbing them of things pertaining to the cross that he's made us holy. And then he's placing them under the law, which is the power of sin. The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. That what is fueling the sin issue is the law and it's law conceptualization. When you rob things of what people have in Christ and you rob them of those things and they think they get it through law and performance, it just produces the power of sin. They don't understand that there is strength and power in walking in the reality of what Christ has given us everything freely, that he that did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how will he not freely with him give us all things? And by focusing our minds on the things that have been freely given to us, all things that have been freely given to us in Christ, that we're strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man as Christ dwells in our hearts through faith that he would grant you according to his glorious riches to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. So as Christ dwells in our hearts through faith, and faith is understanding everything he has freely given to us and has done for us, that he was raised for our justification, that he made us holy without blemish and free from accusation, that he made us the righteousness of God, that we have passed from death to life and will not come into the judgment. That as Christ dwells in our hearts through faith, we're strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. So the scripture talks about when someone has fallen, let one who is spiritual restore such a person. There is a way to spiritually restore a person that has nothing to do with the law and self-performance and pointing a person back to self and back to dead works to appease their conscience. But it is Christ that he, through the eternal spirit, offered himself up without blemish to purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So he offered himself up without spot so he would purge our conscience, purge our conscience from sin so that by faith we would serve the living God and the reality that we are justified, not guilty people, the righteousness of God, holy without blemish and free from accusation, all because of Christ and Christ alone. So how do you restore a person that has seemed to have fallen into some kind of sin or temptation while well, you tell them who they are in Christ, that they are a justified, not guilty person, that they are holy without blemish and free from accusation, that it's not self-dependent, that Christ did it all. When he said it was finished, it was finished. And Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my words and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life, not might have, not could have, not possibly have but has everlasting life. They shall not come into the judgment. They have passed from death to life. And so there is power in understanding the sufficiency of God's grace, that my grace is sufficient for thee, for my power is made perfect in weakness. The power of the Spirit, the power of God is made perfect when we understand our weakness and our insufficiency and our inability to do anything about our situation. So we look to God and his sufficient grace, and my grace is sufficient for thee, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And that is my problem with people like Paul Washer and Stephen Lawson and John MacArthur is they don't make people believe that God's grace is sufficient. In fact, in their teachings, they will downplay what grace is in people's lives by making them look to themselves and making them think that grace isn't sufficient for them. And so they are not accessing the power of God. That he who supplies the Spirit and works miracles among you, does he do it by the keeping of the law or by the hearing of faith? That he that supplies the Spirit, the power and the ministration of the Spirit, is it supplied through your keeping of the law, through your performance, through your effort, self-dependency, or is it by the hearing of faith? So the ministering and the empowering of the Spirit is by the hearing of faith, and that is how he grants us according to his glorious riches to be strengthened with might by his Spirit in the inner man. As Christ dwells in your heart through faith, and that is through the reality of what he accomplished and who we are on the basis of his life and work. And these people with their false teachings are always cutting people off from that, putting them in the flesh and keeping them from walking in the spirit and the whole time telling them, put to death the deeds of the body. And then they themselves aren't doing it.
Another church in North Texas set to be looking for a new pastor after theirs was fired, accused of having an inappropriate relationship with a woman. Trinity Bible Church of Dallas announced the indefinite removal of lead pastor Stephen J. Lawson. He spent decades at other churches before coming to Trinity Bible Church six years ago. The church says they will pray for Lawson, but we did just check their website and they have already deleted his biography. It is incumbent upon every true believer to be pursuing holiness, and those who are not pursuing holiness are not true believers in the Lord. They may have a profession of faith, but they do not have the possession of faith. Holiness marks true believers. So you can see how it is with these folks. They have not put to death the deeds of the body. They have not put to death the self-righteous attempts to justify themselves and make themselves holy without blemish and free from accusation in the flesh. They have not put to death the deeds of the body. They also are under the law, which is producing the power of sin. And so these people don't understand that when it comes to putting to death the deeds of the body, it's all of it. It's reckoning yourself dead to sin and alive in Christ Jesus. And that whatever is not a faith is sin. And so whatever religious attempts in the flesh that you're trying to do to justify yourself or make yourself righteous, those are deeds of the flesh that these people have not put to death. So in their self-righteous attempts to make themselves holy without blemish and free from accusation and justified and righteous in the denial of Christ, they have not put to death the deeds of the body. So I'm going to wrap it up here, brothers and sisters. I hope your night or day is going good. God bless you. Peace to you and take care.